I'm going to say this. Nick Diaz has not been here for a long time. He has not fought since he fought Anderson Silva way back in the day. Yep. He has kind of gone away. But he, he, he stays a bit of an enigma like his brother. But the moment they show up, people tune in. Now, yesterday the countdown release on YouTube. Valentina Shevchenko fighting Lauren Murphy. 61,000 views. Volkanovski versus Ortega. 155,000 views. This is 24 hours. Nick Diaz, after five and six years away, versus Robbie Lawler, two, 935,000 views in 24 hours. The guy's an absolute star. And that is still the truth. But with all the time away, right? Yep. All the time away. Yesterday, somebody put something up like it's been 209 months, mm -hmm. the 209, yep. where Diaz from Stockton is from since those guys fought the first time, 209 months, which is a crazy thing to think about. Now Diaz comes back after all this time away. Mm -hmm. The numbers show that people still care. But what are the expectations for a guy that's been away from this long, especially from your point, right, where you remember Nick Diaz laying on the ground, grabbing his head right. against Anderson, <laughs> right. doing his thing. What do you think you're going to see in Diaz this weekend when he returns to the Octagon? I, th I think you're going to see the same old, same old from the antics, right? You're going to see a guy who's willing to fight, a guy who's willing to taunt, someone who's going to stand across from his opponent and, and be in his face and be ready to go and make it an interesting fight and have a great time. But it's the skill set I'm looking for. I think people... People just don't remember that when we were talking about Nick Diaz back in the day, it was in the same conversations as, you know, as the GSPs, the same conversations as the Carlos Condits, Natural Born Killers. He obviously had an opportunity to stand in the octagon with Anderson Silva. Nick Diaz was not only a star by, the, the, by, by his fame or by his, 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 his infamy or by the way that he brought people and his following. He was a star because of his skill set, right? Because he comes from a jiu-jitsu background, but he understood the stand-up game in a way that it was interesting and he was an enigma inside the octagon will we still see that he's going to be by, by fight night he's going to have been away from the octagon for 2430 days for for just some reference the the, the two people that headlined the, the the card that Robbie Lawler and Nick Diaz fought on first were Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz bro like, like, that's how long <laughs> Nick Diaz has been in the game. And so I would actually, because, like, I, you, you know, you think about, like, Alden Smith. You think about Antonio Brown. You think about Josh Gordon. Some of these guys who were great players who had long stints away from the game, none of those dudes were away for five, six years. So for you, DC, a dude who has been in the octagon at the championship level, fought the, the best fighters in the world, how do you think you could handle a five-year layoff, six-year layoff, and what do you think do you think Nick Diaz will be like on Saturday night versus Robbie Lawler? You know the difference between Nick Diaz and and most people and guys like AB, right? Like mm -hmm. AB doing his thing right now in Tampa, balling. But like guys like those guys who are younger, right? They're so active. Diaz still does triathlons. Diaz is, is always working out. He's constantly running. He teaches jujitsu, has his own academy. He's still so active that even in those five years, you got to think that Nick Diaz has been still learning and growing in the sport. He just has not been in the training camp, whereas his brother still fought. Gil Melendez is still fought. Jake Shields is still fought. That whole original scrap pack, right? Cesar Grace's jujitsu was up. You know, like those guys. Those guys all have still fought. So Nick has been around. And those guys are improving and getting better. So you'd imagine that Nick is not a guy that's been away for long like me. I've been away for 13, 14 months. Mm -hmm. But I feel different. I feel retired because I want to spend my time on the golf course, whereas Nick Diaz <laughs> spends his time doing triathlon. He spends his time on the bike. He spends his time in the jiu-jitsu room, in the mat room. He's not living the life of a retired fighter, even mm -hmm. though he's away from the sport. So I kind of imagine that he's going to look pretty similar, and he got the right kind of matchup. Right. It's not like he was forced into one of the fights like it looked like he was going to get. Man, there were rumors of guys like Hamza Chimaev right. calling him out. Guys like Neil Magny, guys fighting uh, Kamara Usman. Mm -hmm. Like, what are we doing here? We can't put him in there with those guys. That's leading put him to in the there slaughter. with a guy like Robbie Lawler. Guys fought before. 
Yep, a guy that is a former champion but has not looked great lately. Mm -hmm. You put him in there with the right type of matchup that not only can be competitive, but it also touches on that nostalgia, right, of a time where Nick Diaz and Robbie Lawler were two of the baddest men walking the face of planet Earth, yeah. right? And so you get that and you get a very competitive fight. So I expect uh, a good fight. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.